Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm very excited to present to you my 2022-2023 brand ambassador audition for Graphic 45. And I am auditioning for my second term. I want to show you what I used for my project. Um, I will be using some vintage photo distress ink. Um, the Graphic 45 black chipboard which is amazing. I'm also going to be using an 80 pound smooth um, cardstock in black. And then the collection I've chosen for my project is this gorgeous new uh, Let It Be collection. It's absolutely vibrant and beautiful, um, full of sunflowers and colors, and I just absolutely love it. So what I have used mostly throughout my project is papers from the 8x8 collection pad. I've also used some of the journaling cards, both 4x6 and 3x4. Um, a few of the chipboards were used. A few of the stickers uh, that are included in that the Graphic 45 um, 12x12 collection pack were used. And then I have actually used a couple pages of the 12 by 12, mostly for uh, the fussy cuts and some of the cut aparts. Most of the papers were used um, from the eight by eight. So this is what I have created. This is a six by six uh, mini album that I have created and I have used fussy cuts for my cover. Lots and lots of fussy cuts here. And I've also used my wrapped chipboard method for this focal piece here with one of the cut aparts from the 12 by 12 collection. I have one of the chipboards here along with one of the stickers and a border strip. Uh, this is one of the matte gems, the uh, matte pearl gems from Graphic 45 in black. Uh, another piece of chipboard was used on my spine here. And then on the back, I've used um, some of my leftover papers that I um, cut to add a little enhancement to the back piece. And I've used a black and white gingham ribbon that I had in my stash uh, to create this. Now, like I said, this is six by six and there are two, it is trifold, so there are two one inch spines. So let's just jump in and see what's inside. When you open this, on the side here we have a diagonal pocket and I have embellished that with one of the stickers and then one of the journaling cards there. And I have placed some black cardstock photo mats in um, throughout this album. Um, you could add any kind of um, inserts that you like to this. I just like the way the black looked against this paper. Here, this one has a pocket, this flap. This is our trifold. So we have a flap here with one of the buzz um, border strips, um, a, po a pocket here, and then I've enhanced that with a sticker. Uh, this photo mat has a little bee sticker, more of that beautiful paper. Um, most of the pages in this album are matted using the um, patterns and solids from the collection. Um, I apologize, I did not show that to you at the beginning, but I did use a lot of the patterns and solids throughout. That is what you see um, as all of my mats um, in the album. This middle section here, and I do have a tutorial on how to create this fun little sliding uh, mechanism on a belly band. Some more little photo mats here. I just love how all of this paper coordinates so well together. Um, it's beautiful paper. So the first system here is a two double-sided page system. So you have four pages. Uh, this one has one of the journaling cards that flips out. And then I've added some homemade picture corners. Uh, another little photo mat there. Uh, this page here has a little belly band place for uh, a photo mat. And then the last page is another one of our journaling cards and that flips out here. And one of the stickers was backed with um, the cardstock 
and placed just above there with some glue so that you could add um, a photo here and change it out. Next, we're gonna flip to the middle here. Now the middle is done using a magnet closure and this is also a pocket with another photo mat. And that flips down this way. And then, let me pull this down. This flips up. We have another fun belly band up here with a photo mat. And then a pocket down here with a place for a photo mat. And that just, like I said, magnet closure. Here we have the second page system. Uh, this is four double-sided, so eight pages here. And for this system here, I have just used the patterns and solids to map my pages and then some of the gorgeous papers um, so that you could add any kind of photos that you like and left them because they are just beautiful by themselves. So I will flip through these. And then the final page back here, we have a pocket with hinges and a fun little bookmark using some of the chipboard, uh, one of the stickers, and some leftover paper. This here is a fussy cut from the paper. Uh, this came from the 12 by 12 collection. And then the back uh, folds back over here. You want to make sure that this all folds inside. And um, that is my album. Next, I'm going to show you um, how I made the base of this album using the Graphic 45 black chipboard, um, as well as that slide mechanism. And I will have a um, page by page photo tutorial um, listing the papers used as well as the measurements. Have a wonderful day and wish me luck. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is assemble the album itself. Um, for that, you will need the previously shown uh, three pieces of six by six black graphic 45 chipboard. And then two more pieces of the black chipboard at one inch by six inches. So we're gonna wrap our spines, and what we need for that is two pieces of black cardstock, and you want a good weight. Uh, this, I believe, is about an 80 pound weight that I'm gonna use, and you want a good quality cardstock that's not going to um, crack under the scoring. So for these, we need two pieces that are four inches by eight inches, and this is what we're going to use to wrap our spines. So to do that, I am going to use my scoreboard and put my first piece of four inch by eight inch cardstock down and I have spacers now if you don't have um, spacers that you can use like these um, you can also use the Tim Holtz ruler actually is one and a half inch um, or some make some with cardboard that measure one and a half inches wide and ones that measure one inch wide so Firstly, we want the one and a half inch on the side and then the one inch on the top. And this is just going to assure that I line my spines up perfectly. And I'm going to grab some score tape. And I'm going to run that down my spine piece. You can also use glue for this step. I just prefer um, score tape. It has a nice, smooth, um, full coverage finish. And that's what I'm going for. So I'm going to burnish that all down, that score tape. And then we will peel off the score tape backing. And then you just want to line this up with on your scoreboard with your spacers. Remember, this is one and a half inches 
This is one inch. And we're just going to line that up nicely. Remove our spacers, and that's going to give us this. And what we want to do with this is we're just simply going to fold this in. So it wraps around that bottom portion and top portion of our spine piece. And then we're going to use liquid glue for this portion. Just want to add your glue up here and all on your, if I can get my glue to come out, all up here on, pull this in nice and tight. And then what you want to do is just get this burnished by pushing that paper up against your um, chipboard and then outward so that you get a nice smooth score line there and that your paper is actually getting up against that inside. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other end. I also like to usually put a little bit of glue right in front of the chipboard in that score line. Um, it just helps uh, smooth the paper out nicely. Again, I'm just going to go up against that chipboard and out. On both sides. being careful not to rip my paper and then I'm just going to run my bone folder flatly across there to give that a nice smooth finish and we're just going to set this one aside and do the next one let that glue dry I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one so now we have our two spines that are covered and what we're going to do with these now is grab a pair of scissors and on each one of these we are going to go right up to the edge of that chipboard right there we're just going to cut a small don't go right up to the edge but we just want a tiny little angled cut and you want to do that on all sides essentially making kind of a wing shape like so. So not a big long miter, but just a slight one. Because this is what's going to adhere our covers um, to the spines. So now what you should have is two pieces that look like this looks somewhat like a wing and we're just going to grab a bone folder and we're just going to run it gently so that you don't break the paper right along both sides of that chipboard underneath just to get that paper wrapped around nice smooth finish Okay, on to the next. Okay, so now we're going to attach our first six by six cover to one of our spines. And I'm gonna use my scoreboard to line this up. I have it turned sideways so that I have one of the lips that are raised on the bottom. I'm gonna push my spine piece all the way up and I've put score tape on both of these um, side wings of this about an eighth of an inch past that score line. So you don't want to go all the way up against it. You want enough room um, for this to be able to move. So I'm going to pull off my score tape here and I'm going to add a little bit of glue uh, in the middle here just as added strength for 
the covers. And you just want to use that score tape that's an eighth of an inch away from the spine as a guide when you put your first piece down. So now we have our first piece down. We're going to turn this upside down, go to the other side, remove our score tape. Add that glue just in the middle. You don't have to add the glue, but it just adds a little bit more strength. And then we're gonna go right to that, where I put that score tape and press it down. So now we have our first one adhered. As you can see, when you flip this over, you'll see your score lines from your um, spine on the inside. So now that we're on the inside, we just want to gently push down those score lines again. Don't push too hard because you do not want to break your paper. And then you'll see that you'll be able to turn this. And that's going to be our first one. And we'll do the exact same thing that we just did uh, for the next six by six. All right, so now we have our three covers, the front, the middle, and the back, and our two spines all connected. They should look like that. Now we're going to place down a lining across these. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take the two pieces that we cut five and seven eighths by 12, and five and seven eighths by eight and a half, and we're going to place those down on the inside. And we're just going to glue these. You can use score tape if you like. And I always start with the longer one. So just go ahead and lay that down so it lines up about an eighth of an inch around your 6x6 cover. Okay, and just smooth that out. Burnish it down really nicely with the bone folder and get all that glue um, adhered nicely. And then we will go in and add the uh, 5 and 7 eighths by 8 inch piece. And it is just going to go right up against that one. And do. And it looks like I probably could have cut this at eight and three quarters and still um, had enough of the black at the end of the chipboard showing. Um, I'm not going to change it now, but um, because there's going to be things covering all of this. I'm not concerned that I have a little more showing on this side. It's quite all right. But if you are picky about that, you can certainly um, make this piece um, like an eighth of an inch longer than the eight and a half. So we're just gonna make sure this is all nice and burnished and you will have what you see here. Then you just wanna find your folds and run your your um, bone folder in there nice and smoothly. We don't want to push through our paper. We just want to line that up and you'll kind of hear the glue. Um, if you're using glue or score tape, you'll hear it kind of give so it knows that it's going down into um, that crack, that crevice, which is what we need. 
And you're just going to have to work it until that folds a little at a time so that you don't tear your paper. And we'll do the same thing here. And as you can see, this will be our base of our album. Next, we'll move on to um, adding pages as well as um, covering them. Okay, so now we're going to make our page systems. We will have two sets of pages, um, one that has four and one that has um, just two sets of pages. So uh, the first one is done with one sheet and this will be five and three quarters by 12 and we just want to and it's the black cardstock again we just want to score this at five and three quarters and six and a quarter and that's going to give us a nice half inch space in between go ahead and fold and burnish make sure it's nice and straight these are pages. We want to make sure that they not only fit well, um, but they line up nicely. So we're just going to go ahead and fold and burnish both of those lines to that half inch mark. And that will be our front set of two pages. Next, we're going to do the exact same thing to the other five and three quarter by 12 inch black. So score again at five and three quarters and six and a quarter. And we'll just fold that. And then finally, the five and three quarter by 11 and three quarter black, you're going to score at five and three quarters and six. So we put this one. And these, once we get this all burnished, I'm using a, a nice heavyweight cardstock, which is wonderful, um, but it isn't as easy to, to burnish and fold as the thinner cardstock. All right, so now that we have this page system, we are going to do a stack the deck method, put the first one that we did with the half inch score mark, one of those on your scoreboard lengthwise, and then we're going to put some glue or score tape, whichever you prefer, down the quarter inch spine of the second page system. Open that up and just set this on your scoreboard so that that is right in the middle of that six there. And it should line right up. Make sure you're straight on both sides and then press it down. And now as you can see, we have more pages. Oops, that got loose on me. Not quite sure why that happened. I didn't. Uh... I'm just going to go over this again. Turn my pages and go ahead and burnish them down again now that it's glued all together. Okay. 
just want to try to line up all your pages nice and neatly and then burnish and you will get this nice little booklet system which will be our back pages so next we'll move on to pockets and our middle flip page okay so now that our cover has had a chance to dry and I will tell you that a little tip if you clip your um, cover that are three pieces like this uh, closed while it's drying it will also help the paper kind of the fibers break down so that you um, don't have as much of an issue with opening and closing it'll get more used to it so go ahead and open it up making sure that you have it so this is our front cover folded over the back cover that's where you want to be so on this first spine here I'm going to line this up so that it's at the half inch marks on either side of my six on my scoreboard and I'm going to take that first page system which is just the two page it's all one and I'm going to put some score tape I need to grab my half inch score tape over here I'm going to put a strip of score tape down that spine that we created right on there and just make sure you don't go over the score line right in the middle and burnish that tape down peel off the backing and then we just want to make sure that our glue tape did not overhang the score line. You just kind of run down your finger down it. And now you have this, you can see that you're going to have about an eighth of an inch, excuse me, a quarter of an inch um, on each side of this. So you have their half inch in the middle and a quarter on each side. So line this up down a little bit so that it's with the paper at that three quarter mark. And push it down and make sure you have the same on the other side. And then we just want to burnish that tape down. So when you turn it this way, see I did get mine a little bit off. So I'm just going to pull that over a little and burnish it down. And it does not have to be exact as long as you have your pages in the front here. Go ahead and burnish them down and burnish your tape in the middle. And now we have two pages in the front. Next, we'll put the back ones in. We're going to do the same thing. Line that spine up between the half inch mark and the half inch mark with the six in the middle on your scoreboard. We're going to add score tape to this. And again, I'm using half inch score tape, so it's probably should be using three quarters so that it does not overlap. Um, but I do believe I ran out of three quarters. So I'm going to do two strips of quarter inch so that I don't have that problem again. Just going to run that right next to the score mark. And it's okay if it overhangs um, each other a little bit, overlaps I should say. Uh, because it will peel when you uh, remove the backing. It just gives you a little more strength. I'm just going to get that on there. Peel off that backing. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to make sure that our tape is not overhanging and then we're going to line this up at that three quarter inch mark down a little bit so that you have about an eighth of an inch of space at the top and the bottom both and I'm going to turn it grabbed onto it a little quick for me there So 
it right there. Okay, there we go. And just press it all down. So you now have that one, two, three, four pages in this back one. Now we're going to add our top flap element in the middle. And to do that, you will need, <clears throat> excuse me, a piece that is uh, of the black cardstock that is five and seven eighths by six and three eighths. And then it's scored at a half an inch on that six and three eighths. So across the top, we're just going to burnish that down. And I'm going to go ahead and miter those corners um, just a bit. So right at the score line and up. I'm going to do this one with glue. So we're just going to run glue along that flap. Uh, this is going to go right here in the middle. So I am going to put this at three inches. and nine inches so that I'm at the middle. And then we just want this right up the top with about a quarter of an inch on either side. Just make sure that we get right up to the top edge there. And then flip it up and go ahead and burnish down that flap. So now you have this fun flap at the top. Okay, so now that we have our top flap page attached, we're next going to add this little bar at the bottom, which measures one inch by five inch. And I've cut this from... Uh, the black cardstock that I used as well. And I have just taken this, pulled it down, and folded to find where I needed this to go. And then put my magnets on. Next, we're going to add a piece of six and an eighth by five and five eighths piece to the underneath side here. And that's going to cover that magnet on there. And I've actually inked all of the edges of my uh, Graphic 45 papers using a Vintage Photo Distress Ink. So I'm just going to add my glue to the back of this piece. And this is the um, Sentiment Red from the Patterns and Solids 12 by 12 uh, Patterns and Solids pack. Just a gorgeous color. And it looks amazing with black. So we're just going to line that up so we have about an eighth of an inch on either side and across the top. You will have a little more on the space on the bottom, uh, but we're putting a pocket there. So that is not going to uh, matter at all. But this does cover up your magnet. We'll also be covering this bar so that this does not show. So there is our first piece of the Let It Be laid down. Okay, so now that we have that paper down, we're going to add a pocket here. So you will need a piece of the black cardstock that measures seven and one eighth by three and one quarter. Place that piece on your scoreboard and score at one half of an inch on this side. Flip it around and score at one half of an inch on the other side. And then score at one half an inch across the bottom. 
And this is going to give us a two and three quarter inch tall pocket. We're going to miter the corners at the across sections where we have our score lines, like so. We're going to fold and burnish those score lines down nicely. Bring your book back in and go ahead and add some glue. You can also use score tape as well if that is your preference. And then we're just going to line our pocket up with that paper below. So the red paper that is underneath your pocket edges should only go over a little past that red paper so that you can still close and open your book nice and neatly. Um, it does not interfere with that score line right there. So burnish that all down nice. And as you can see, we have this. So that is our first section done. Uh, next, we will move to this back section, which is the back inside cover. And we are going to cover this with paper. And then we are going to add a pocket the same as this pocket. Okay, so for this back piece, we're going to take one of our five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths mats. And this is in the uh, yellow. I'm going to go ahead and run that vintage photo ink around all of my edges. And I'm going to add glue to this. And then place this down. Make sure that you leave about an eighth of an inch of space all the way around and even a little more doesn't hurt on the sides. As long as you don't get up against that score line you are golden. And if you didn't want um, a full page here because we're putting a pocket, you could do a half page as well. I just like the look of a full page and it's a little slicker. So when I put something in my pocket, um, it will work really, really well. So next we're going to grab our pocket. Okay, so we have our black cardstock that measures seven by three and a quarter to make our pocket. And we're going to score on the side at half an inch. We're going to go into half an inch on this side and then turn and score down the bottom at half an inch. Same way we did our mid pocket. We're going to miter those corners right at the intersection. And go ahead and fold your score lines. And watch for them to overlap. If you don't miter just enough these will overlap and you don't want that because then your um, pocket corners get a little wonky you just want them to meet you don't want them to overlap each other there we go so i'm going to burnish down those flaps And add some glue, just like we did the other pocket. Bring in our book. And again, we're going to put this on our paper. Kind of line it up with that yellow paper. Your flaps. And with the bottom and burnish it down. 
And now we have a nice back pocket. Next, we'll move to the front panel. Close my pages here. So for the front cover panel, we're going to take another piece of the yellow from Patterns and Solids. This will be a mat, and it also measures 5 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths. And it was inked in the vintage photo ink all the way around the edges, like all of my papers. We are just going to place this down. Nice and straight. Burnish that down. And now we are going to make an angled pocket to go there. We're going to take a piece of the black cardstock that measures six and a quarter by six and a quarter. We are going to score it one half down the side, turn once, and then score at one half across the bottom. Then we need to decide after we, we're going to go ahead and miter this corner right at the intersection. And we just want to place this. This is how I do my angled pockets. You may have a better method. Um, but I take them and put them on the paper itself. So my score line is meeting that yellow at the moment on both sides. And then I pull it back so I can see about where I want my angle to be. And I'm going to do about right about at the half inch mark on my scoreboard. And then I am just going to fold that over. And you can either tuck this in and just leave it or cut it off. And I'm going to actually cut mine off. So this is what I have after I cut that off. I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish my score lines for my half inch flaps. Making sure that they don't overlap and they do just a little bit. So again, I'm just going to trim this a tiny bit. Burnish these down. And add my glue to my flaps. Bring the book back in. And then just place your bottom corner with the bottom corner of your yellow mat. You can go over further if you prefer. This is just how I do it. And then just smooth that out. Get rid of any excess glue and burnish it down. And now you have this nice angle pocket with plenty of room uh, to put things, inserts and such. So here's what we have so far. We have our front inside cover done, uh, our first page system, our belted middle page and pocket, our second page system, and our back pocket. Next, we'll move on to doing some decorating. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place the ribbon um, that will be used to close the album under the paper um, that we are going to put on this pocket. And knowing that the album is six inches, we want to find our three inch mark. So I'm just going to grab my ruler And I'm going to find my three inch mark and I'm going to grab a piece of score tape. This is a larger ribbon size, so I want to make sure um, that I get enough coverage. So I just want to put this 
right where that three lines up so that our ribbon is in the middle of the page. Okay. And then we're just going to burnish that piece of score tape down. Peel off our backing. And then just make sure if you're using a ribbon um, that's different on one side than the other, which this one is not, um, that you have the right side pressed down when you do this. And also make sure that you leave enough room along here um, for your angled pocket. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put glue on my angled pocket cover. And place that down. And as you can see, there's a little over an eighth of an inch of space, the black of the pocket showing. And then we just want to burnish that all down, especially around that ribbon. And we want to make sure that it sticks and stays. And now we have our ribbon, half of our ribbon closure. The other half will be done when we do the back. So next we're going to move to this first page system, which is our two double-sided pages. And there's a fun element that I'm going to show you on this page. And I am calling this a slide belly band. <clears throat> I have done this in an album before and it's just super fun. So what you will need for this is the um, page covers, which for this page we have the red patterns and solids at five and five eighths by five and five eighths. And then we have our um, eight by eight collection. This is what this was taken from. The sweet as can be, and this is five and a half by five and a half, and that will be the next portion. Then we're going to make our little element here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down, and then I will show you how I made the slide. So now I'm going to show you how to make my fun little slide belly band. You're going to start with a piece of um, scrap paper, and this measures one inch by five and five eighths of an inch, I do believe. Yes. And then we also have a small piece of scrap that measures two and three quarters by about seven eighths. And this piece really doesn't matter. It's just a scrap um, that we're going to fold that will go over are this to make a slide mechanism. Then we're going to take the Let It Be Sunflower from the 8x8 uh, eight, eight, eight by 8 Let It Be page, and we're going to fussy cut it, and I've already inked the edges of that with the vintage photo. And what you want to do is fold your, once you have the proper sizing for um, your little piece so it slides easily, we just want to glue this belt together, this little hinge, and then you want to take your let it be, go on the back side, and on the smooth side of this, adhere some glue, and place that on your back side of your fussy cut. And I would suggest giving this just a couple seconds at least uh, to dry, depending on what glue you're using. Um, but we want to make sure that that sticks. Once you feel that it is stuck well enough, you can also hold on to the hinge while you slide this piece in. Continue to make sure that it's still uh, just double check it and make sure that it looks okay and that it still slides. And then you just want to adhere glue 
on either end of that little strip. You can also use score tape for this. Go right about the middle of your page and you can measure it three inches if you like. Um, and then we're gonna go all the way over to that red mat underneath. And we're going to slide that and just make sure that we are nice and straight. Get rid of any excess glue on the sides that might be seeping. And make sure that those ends there are burnished down really nicely where you put your glue. And now as you can see, you have this fun little element uh, that slides. So when you put a picture or something in here in your belly band, you can put it uh, this on, position this on the picture any way that you like, or you can just leave this. I mean, it's super, super cute. So that is how to make a slide belly band embellishment. Next, I'm going to add one of the journaling cards, uh, the three by fours to this page to enhance this page a bit. And I am just gonna grab one of those. So I have grabbed the journaling card with the little bee and the sunflowers, the polka dots in the background, kind of plays off the polka dots here. And to do this on our angled pocket, we just wanna make sure that we line it up where we think it's going to look the best. And then we just want to add our glue on the bottom portion. So you can either put your glue on the pocket itself or you can put it um, like I'm going to on here. So I'm gonna go down from this top corner And I'm just going to apply my glue in that bottom portion, making sure that I don't go over because I do not want the glue um, to get here. So I'm going to place that back on there. And there you have it. Nice way to embellish a pocket. Okay, next I will show you in photos the pages as they progress, and I will show you a few tricks on the way. Okay, so for the second page in this set, I'm going to show you how to add a 4x6 journaling card, which was cut down to um, a 4 by 5.5. So we cut a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom. And this is one of the journaling cards. So you'll have the lines on the back. You're also going to take a piece of green uh, patterns and solids scrap, or you could use yellow in this instance as well, um, or black, whichever you choose. Uh, this is also going to be five and a half by one inch, scored at half, and then we're going to burnish it down. So first we want to attach this to our page and I'm just simply going to do that by adding some uh, glue here to this inside. So I'm folded in the shape of an L and I'm going to add my glue here and not going over that score line. You want to leave enough room um, for this to fold. And it's going to be opening and closing so you don't you don't want to have this where you can't flip it then we're just going to add our glue to that next flap that is left and we're going to put our uh, be yourself journaling card right up to the paper lined up where um, that hinge is you want to get right up to it and then we're going to burnish that down. And now we have this fun little element before we place our paper down and all of the, the hinge um, is hidden. I didn't get mine all the way over, but that's okay. 
And all of these papers, again, were inked uh, with Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Well, now I'll just add my glue to the back of this and adhere it to the page.